Hey guys, welcome to uh, Metal Roofing Learning Channel. Today I'm going to be uh, showing you guys how to cut the WS410Z closure. Uh, this is going to be used on pretty much all standing seam applications, whether you're doing an end wall, a single pitch, an A-frame. I'm going to go over a little bit more of an advanced method instead of just uh, doing a, a standard square cut on the Z. Uh, there are multiple methods to actually cutting and installing the Z closure, uh, so I'm just going to go over one of the main ones today. This is the Metal Roofing Learning Channel, brought to you by Western States Metal Roofing, where you can find a variety of colors and finishes, all while saving by buying Factory Direct. Use of the following video content is subject to the warning, disclaimer of warranties, and limitation of liability as set forth on this screen. All right, so the first step uh, when it comes to actually getting ready to install your Z closure, getting ready to cut it, uh, we, we have an 18 inch wide snap lock panel. This panel actually measures about 17 and a half inches when it's completely installed. It's about 17 and 5 eighths uh, because of the width of the actual high of the panels. Um, so with it being 17 and 5 eighths, we're going to be putting uh, 7 eighths mastic tape down all the way across this panel. So I'm going to actually end up cutting this at 17 and 3 eighths. Uh, we're going to take about roughly a quarter, quarter inch material off. That way you have a little bit of room for your, uh, your Z closure to be pushed in with the mastic installed. You don't want it to be too tight uh, because the actual, the metal Z closure itself will rip and tear the 7 8 mastic off the highs of the panels. And uh, then you're kind of defeating the, the method of this installation method. For this demonstration, I am gonna be using a Sharpie, uh, Sharpie marker. That way you guys can actually see the marks on the Z closure. Uh, first step, we're gonna mark out uh, we're going to actually end up adding two inches to our original measurement. So we have 17 and 3 eighths. So my first mark, I'm going to be making that at 19 and 3 eighths. The two inches added to this uh, measurement is going to be for the folds on the Z closure itself. And we'll get to that here in a bit. So one thing that I would recommend on this method is writing top on your actual Z closure itself. That way, when you're, when you're going through and making all of your uh, your cuts, you know what's top and what's, what's going to be bottom. So first we're going to square off that line. We're also going to make a mark at one inch. So since this is the top and I want to keep the top, I'm actually not going to mark that measurement all the way through. Rather, I'm going to transfer it down to the face. Now that you have these two marks right here, this is going to be my cut line and this is going to be my fold line. We're going to now come over to the other side and repeat the process. We're going to come in one inch and we're going to make a fold line and also our cut line. Uh, last thing on this side, I'm going to make a fold line right here, and we're cutting here. Now that we have everything marked out, we can start cutting the Z closure. So we're going to take this bottom leg completely off on the far end. We're going to come back through and we're going to take this rounded edge off since we snipped up to there. And then this is going to be your finished look over here. So from there, you can either use a three inch, uh, three inch hand benders or you can actually just fold this in by hand. And then from there, we're going to come over here. Uh, we're going to cut off this side completely and do the same exact process as we did on the left side.
Okay, now that we have this cut off, we're gonna be doing the same thing. Hold that in. And there's our first piece of Z closure. So the purpose of these vertical legs, uh, it's so that way, that way you actually have metal and a place to compress the mastic tape. So uh, other installation methods, you're gonna end up having to caulk behind the highs or, or behind the actual Z closure around the highs of the panels. Uh, so with this installation method, you get both a mastic tape and a caulk behind there, uh, just less likelihood of having any leaks. So what I was saying with the actual vertical, uh, vertical bends that you have right here, when you place this in between the panel, you have a one inch fold on both sides of the highs. So that seven eighths mastic, when you run that all the way around your highs and you tuck your Z closure inside of that, you now have both a metal flange and mastic in there together instead of just caulking the back side of the highs. So it's really just an extra step to help waterproof your roof. Uh, some installers will actually take the Z closure itself, put mastic on the bottom side of each piece of Z. Uh, this particular method, we're gonna be running a continuous strip of mastic all the way across the panels, up over the highs. Uh, it just creates more of a actual waterproof seal uh, around the highs of the panels itself. Um, so first step, we've got our mark for our panel on the high of where the end of our transition trim is gonna be. And I want our front of our Z closure to be back from that a half an inch. So I'm gonna make a mark there. Um, typically you can go to the other side of your roof deck or go 15, 20 feet, do the same exact thing and you can start snapping chalk lines all the way across. In this particular installation, since we're working with a small mock-up, I'll just go through and mark out each panel. The next step that we're gonna be taking, we're gonna take our Z closure. Uh, we're gonna put our tape on and measure to the center of the bottom flange. Ours is measuring roughly two and three eighths to the center of the lower flange that's gonna be on the actual roof itself. So what we're gonna do, we have our top measurement and we're gonna measure back two and three eighths and make a mark on the roof panel. Okay, and we're gonna be repeating that method on the other side of the roof. That way we can go through and uh, snap our chalk lines. We now have all of our highs marked out, uh, two and three eighths back from the front of the Z closure. Uh, like I said, the measurement may vary just a little bit depending on the, the Z closure you get, so you wanna make sure to measure it. Um, now we're gonna go through with just a straight edge and mark out the pan of the panels. So that way we have a good straight line of where the, the mastic's gonna be going. Now that we have all of our marks made uh, for the center of our lower flange on our Z closure, we're gonna be attaching our screws through. Uh, we put that dead center, so we're gonna also wanna center our mastic over that. So first thing with your mastic, you wanna come up over the top of the high, and then make sure that you get it seated well down into each of the, uh, the corners of the panel. And then we're doing the same thing over here where there's the crease of the actual snap lock panel. You wanna make sure that that gets pushed in pretty well. You don't wanna make the, the you don't wanna tighten the mastic too much, like push it in too tight or else it'll start ripping the mastic and stretching it out. Now that we have our mastic set, everything's pressed down tight. We're gonna go through and remove the liner here. Now that this process is complete, we're ready to start installing our Z closure. Uh, we're just gonna be using a 
uh, an impact or a drill with uh, pancake screws. Uh, the amount of fasteners that you put in the Z closure is completely based off of uh, your architectural plans. Always consult with an engineer to find the proper screw spacing uh, for your project, especially on the Z closure, because uh, pretty much every job, every area is going to be a little bit different. So you'll definitely want to get with a local engineer to figure out the specifications. On this particular application, we're going to be running about four screws per piece of Z. And uh, just to get you guys an idea of how everything goes together. Uh, one last step before we actually install our pitch brake, we're going to go through and caulk the back side of the highs and fill all the, uh, the voids on the back side with, uh, this is just a silicone sealant. You can find step-by-step -step installation videos and homeowner guides on our channel. And don't forget to show your support by hitting the like button and subscribe. Want to learn more? Check out these videos.